Hello, friends and fellow adventurers. Welcome to the Min Max Podcast. We want to thank you for joining us, and you do so as we continue Blood Lords. As always, we'd like to invite you to come join our Discord, where you can hang out with us and other listeners of the show. And if you'd like to throw a little financial support our way, you can check out our Patreon. And a shout out to all of those that are lich level and above Rock Jedi, Wolf, Blardomus Slump, Thunder Mammoth, The Trevor Project, Toss Chris, Fizzgig, AC Goldner, Eric R. Hope just gonna see right past you there. Indie Link, Tawdry Monster, Mercutio, Angel Shadow Art, Cyrendon, The Necromancer Forever, Doc Holiday, Corey, Robert T, Jason K, Dickie Lopez, Bobson Dugnot, Rickety Ropebridge, Alex K, Doma Alaka, Frank L, Just Mike Works, Ross D, Argoon's Long Lost Elbow, Fig Tear, Zach S, Jimmy H, Mr. Turtle, Sleeve, Darren, Caleb W, Pickle, Mr. Grimm, Fire Down, M54 Ewaz, Jameson S, Eric R, plus two four plus seven of Whacking, I'm Not a Robot, George F, Leo Hart, Hard Hard Har, Witch Hunter, Jeremy D, Matthew M, Scott E, Progeny of Cuchulin. I don't think that's right, but close. Liz Giggles, Calistria Specialty, Brandon K, Gringus Maximus, Andrew G, Ebon Flames, Booming Thunder, and Henry. Shout out to new patron this week at the Lich level, a school of fish. Do you, do you think like each fish just like pays a little part of it? Or is like it, the whole school like all together? Anyway, thank you so much for your support. And now a recap of session 38. Having played a game with new acquaintance Bloodlord Kirill, we go and meet another new acquaintance, Bloodlord Zithni. He's a vampire. He takes us out on the city for a night of partying. Arius earns a free question from him about any NPC in Eled. Our next stop is going to be going to a class held by Nethnelma. Before doing so, we do some research about both Nethnelma and her work. Then we go to the class. After the class, it becomes clear that Arius' eccentric actions in Eled have gained him some notoriety. A few students are enamored, Arius starts preaching. He seems to enjoy the idea of being a herald of Zuriel. Eventually, he stops and the classroom clears out. We devise a scheme to get into Nethnelma's office. We wait for her to be gone and accost one of her assistants. Shara convinces him that we need to get into the office to find notes about an unusual undead that has gotten loose. It surprisingly works! You get escorted to Nethnelma's office. When you get there, where is the party? Is the party there? Would yeah, you? I would be. I would be by the office. I'd stay there like I'm still. Um, yeah, like, like I'm still. Uh, like I had left them. We had, we had left them there while I went to find him. I'm standing there like a bodyguard, and he looks at friends of yours. Yes, well, especially, especially the quick. He's the one that understands these things better than I do. He gives kicks a like disdainful up down with his eyes. <laughs> uh, let's make this quick then. What do you you just need notes on the unusual create undead ritual, correct? Sure, yeah. Or more. At a minimum, perhaps there might be other things that might help. Okay, okay, alright, alright. You may come in, and the quick may come in, but the other two stay out and watch out for the abomination. Oh, yes, Arius is very good at that. And don't touch anything. But the books? Yeah, thank you, yes. Touch nothing. (laughs) But the land. Touch nothing. God God damn it. Uh, So many movie references. (laughs) Are we going to have to kill this school? We're going to have to kill this school, aren't we? I mean, possibly. Luke, and he's so good looking, though. It's a ghoul. Who do I have to kill? You're guarding the door. We're going to kill the ghoul. Kill the door? You're, you're actually, actually, you're also guarding the door. You you were expressly oh, told to stay at the door. only well. allowed myself oh, right. and the quick the in, in the room. You guys have fun. My name is King. You guys are watching out for the abomination. I cast Sun Drinker into the room. I can do that Wait, as long as he it's hasn't seen a... Sun Drinker. Sun Drinker can be the abomination that kills him. <laughs> oh yeah, here we go. That's the abomination. Oh no, it got in here. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I love this idea because I can do anything with Sun Drinker as long as it's within a hundred feet of me. Like I just look through the window and be like, in there. Was that tree in here the whole time? Oh, it's alive! I would rather not kill this guy because this whole thing was kind of funny. It's been interesting. <laughs> I do like I do like how this has evolved into Sun Drinker's now the monster <laughs> and is inside the office. Oh, man. I mean, this office is way bigger than I was expecting, though. 
Yeah, it's a pretty big fucking office. I was expecting like a normal teacher's office that is like, you know, 10 by 10. So while we're standing out here, uh, so, Arius, uh, do you think you are actually a herald of Zeria? Of course. But don't you? I guess I just never really thought about it. Yeah. Good for you. What, el- what else would I be? Insane? Isn't everybody? You know, I think to a degree, yes. I go back to polishing my sword. That's it, folks. That's all it is. We got all the RP out of Ted we're going to get for the night. No, feel, no, that's just that's just all the RP out of Arius. I feel I feel good about it. So you walk into the office with the teacher's aide, and they close the door behind. Shara and Kix are inside the office. He says, I am sure this book's around here somewhere. Let me check his shelf. He moves over to the bookshelf that's nearby, just a, a little ways away. And remember, don't touch anything. As he's thumbing through the books, Shara and Kix, you see something manifest just behind the ghoul. And it looks like this. Oh, God. The fuck? That thing's got teeth everywhere. Yeah, it's basically like robes, like a hooded robe floating, kind of incorporeal, with a lot of teeth in its face, and then like teeth... In every opening. Lining its opening, yeah, lining the opening of its sleeves and of its robe. Interesting. The creature, the ghost of some kind, goes to move up on the ghoul as he's sifting through the books. The ghoul doesn't notice this, but Kix and Shara do. Do you act, or do you allow the inevitable to happen? Did we get this guy's name? Nope. Um, is that one of your friends? My friends? I say as it, as it likely kills him. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns around, he turns around, and we're going to roll for initiative, but the Geist's first round and first action in combat is going to be to eat this motherfucker. Om nom nom. Well, at least I rolled well on my deception check. Because it ain't my uh, initiative. Arius, with that initiative. This is great. Love this. Arius, you are at the top of round one. However, you are entirely ignorant of what's going on. Wait, no, Arius is ignorant about something? Yes. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Next. Uh, I, you get a, a free delay, essentially, that you can choose to use or not. I'll think about it. After Arius in the tracker, it is the Geist's turn. And they use their first action to stride up to the ghoul, who just is turning around and saying, What do you mean, my friend? Ah! And begins to scream, which then Arius and Lucan would absolutely be able to hear. But before we get there... No, just quick. Arius just glances over at Lucan and then shrugs and then looks back forward. Uh, critically hits the the ghoul. <laughs> uh, the guy does with a 26 and deals it 33 points of piercing damage. And the ghoul is... F- physically ripped to shreds as this thing's teeth rip off its head from its body. No. And the ghoul collapses. Hmm. I'll take that as a no. (laughs) And it turns to look at Shara and Kix and ends its turn. Kix, it's your turn. Forgive me, what did it always do? Uh, I gave him a free delay. Oh, okay. So there's a spooky ghoul 15 feet away from me. I mean, sorry, spooky whatever that thing is. I don't believe Phantasmal Killer is a focus spell of mine. I must have fucked that up. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> yeah, that is not going to be a focus spell. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah, yeah, one hell of that. a focus spell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'll, it's just, uh, I'll just... Because I don't really know what affects him. I'm just going to hit him with a daze. Do a 
recall knowledge or something on him. Oh yeah, you're smart. <laughs> you're s- I, you know how to play games. I don't. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I was a cult assurance. I mean, a cult check. I mean, thing or it's technically a religion check, for? but you can make an occultism check on this one. Yeah. All right. Well then. I'm going to use assurance on top of automatic knowledge for a free check at 27. Sorry, what? I have assurance, and then I have automatic knowledge and occultism. I can use recall knowledge as for which you have the assurance feat. You can use recall knowledge action with that skill as a free action once per round. Huh. If you do, you must use assurance on that skill. I don't know if I've ever heard of that one before. That's solid. Is that something from the psychic, or is that a... No, it's just, uh, I guess it doesn't reference where it's from, but... What's it called again? Automatic knowledge. No, I mean, just a skill feat, looks like, so... That's core. I guess I've never it's paid attention core. to it before. <laughs> what? There's more worthwhile skill feats that aren't <laughs> medicine-based? So, this is assurance for occultism and automatic knowledge. And yeah. your, what's your assurance total? 27. 27. Your proficiency bonus is 17? Sure is, boys. Really? It's just my plus. It's just my normal plus, isn't it? No. You. No. No. Oh, so it's just. It's 13. Because it doesn't use my modifier. Yeah, it would be 10 plus your level and then your expert right now, right? Yeah. Master. Yeah. Oh, your master. So it would be your level plus 6. I've forgotten what level you guys are for some reason. Sorry. We're level 7. Level 7 now. This just says my proficiency is plus 13. 13, yeah. Yeah. So it would be 23 would be your total then. No, just 20 would be. Because it's 10 plus my proficiency bonus. Yeah, you said your proficiency bonus was 13. 13. Oh, yeah, it's plus... Yeah, but... Plus 10. So 23. Oh, I was adding my level. Sorry. Yeah, okay. And so... And you wouldn't roll. You would just get a 23. Yeah. You just get a 23. Okay, so with assurance, with a 23, you actually do not know anything about this creature. Darn tootin'. I can never tell if assurance is a good feat or not. I think in this... Per- it's... it. <laughs> the fact it's a free can... action does make it pretty decent. I think in the case of... That, that feat combo. A creature that's more powerful than you are, or higher level than you, it does make it difficult. Yeah. It is nice to get free checks, though. Legit. You can't. You can't complain about free. You shit. really can't. Wait. So assurance is a fortune effect. You wouldn't be able to hero point it. I doubt it. I, I suppose you wouldn't be able to because you wouldn't. You're not actually. What are you gonna anything. do? Reroll. <laughs> yeah. I would like to recheck my assurance. Oh, yep. Still twenty three. Still twenty three. Fortitude save. For days. Slow. Slow. I hate it. All right. Not too bad. Gets 25. Aww. That succeeds. Succeeds. It is slowed for one round. Slowed one for one round. Oh, why did you delay ours? Can you it's still not come in? I you just didn't want it? I literally just turned the loop and shrugged. Oh. I heard some sound. I was just like, oh. So you could the open the door. Drinker. Oh, there's the door closed? Sorry. Yeah, I'll the door is closed. That. I'll open a door. Interact action to open for the door. my third action. The door is open. And when you open the door, okay. Lucan and Arius can see that creature and the dismembered body of the student aide that escorted you here. I, g- I guess I'll go then if Kix is done. Arius jumps in. First, I, I, Arius just kind of points at a kill? Yes, yes, so yes, looks kill. between everybody. Kill, kill. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, then first action, he, he goes ahead and walks in. I mean, it's not living, so... And, and he's indifferent. Like, are we killing this or not? Legitimate question. I don't need to kill us. Alright, second action. I kind of forgot how I, how to play this character. Like, I just hit things, right? There's no, like, feats. There's no special attacks. Oh, wait, no, I do have a special attack. Yeah, if you're talking about your intimidation one, it probably doesn't have... A mind uh, but... is the only one I have. But we don't know that for sure. And it's a single action anyways, isn't it? No, it's two actions. Fuck it, second and third actions. Intimidating strike. We'll see if it works. Intimidating strike? Oh, 
I thought that was going for the 20 for a second there. Uh, I got a 22 to hit. A 22 misses. Solid. All right. Then after Arius gets in there, Lucan, it's your turn. Okay. Well, there's a thing. I spend three actions summoning Sun Drinker. And that's about it. But I summon him into the room because I can. Okay. And it takes all three actions to summon, too? All three actions to do that. That's all I can do. You can see that there are some... There are people who are walking by the corridors just from the ends of the hallway. Nobody's approaching you, but you can see that there's not... Everybody is gone from the grounds of the the college yet. Just to put it out there. After Lucan, that takes us to Shara. It's your turn. Um, yes. I also have to remember how to play this character. I need to do an intimidation check for my droid marshal stands. We're going to get a 35, which is a critical success. It is. The DC for this level is 23. So that's going to make my emanation go to 20 feet instead of 10 feet. Goodness. So this is the one that gives everybody the two extra damage, right? Uh, yes. Yep, this is the one that gives everybody a plus two damage. Okay. And with the door wide open, Shara screams and goes into a Dread Marshal stance. I'm yes. assuming there's screaming involved. And her her look changes, as we have mentioned in the past. And then, um, would a religion check be what I need to do for this thing? Identifying? To, yeah, recall knowledge on it. Yes. I also get a 23. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's with religion. Yeah, you know nothing about this creature. You can tell it's a ghost, but that's pretty obvious. Um, that's all three of my actions. All right. Then after Shara, that takes us up to the top of round two. Now the Geist is at the top now since Arius reordered after a delay, but it loses its first action because of the slowed condition. With its second and third actions, it will use the uh, ghost-like whips, wisps of hair that are coming out from this hooded, cloaked figure with these huge, gnashing teeth begins to laugh. And it... <laughs> and then bites into Arius. So for the laugh, that's a 20-foot emanation, so I'm going to need everybody... Except for Lucan, because of line of effect. Woo! Needs to give me a will save. Book power! Is that going to be fear related? Uh, it is. Then everybody gets a plus one. Nice. Arius gets a 29. We got a 27. A 29 is a success. A 27 is a success. Shara? I think Sundrinker needs to give me one as well. Fuck. A 33. A 33 is also a success. 29? A 29 is also a success. You all stave off the panicked laughter that is just about to come out of you. You do not gain the frightened condition. And you are now temporarily immune to the terrifying laugh for 24 hours. It still bites Arius, though. Arius is a 33 hit. Yeah. Yeah. Take 12 points of damage. (laughs) Piercing damage. Mm, I don't want to. Okay, I did. And that takes us over to Kix. It's your turn. It is me. I will unleash Psyche. Rawr. And then I'm going to cast Telekinetic Projectile with a book. A book? That's 25 to miss. 25 misses. And then I'm going to cast an amped message. Ooh. On Sundrinker. And what's that one do? You get to attack, shove, or strike. Sweet. Or trip. Does Sundrinker get reactions? Or step or strike. I'm giving them a reaction, so yes. It's me that no, grants you're giving it. him the ability to use a reaction. Oh, you're but right. Yeah, Sundrinker has reactions. Yeah, I assume they share everything. Yeah, I have I have Eidolon's reaction. I have attack of opportunity. Sweet. Then yeah, smack him. I do then. Take a smack. Uh, I guess I'll go... Fuck. 25 to hit. 
That is a miss. Goodness gracious. Okay. Good good attack kicks. I wanted to say nice nice uh nice hit kicks, but I didn't quite get there. I think it anyway. After kicks, Arius, it's your turn. Well, I guess I just start swinging, right? Mm, okay. Does this guy have any effects on him right now? Mm, just the uh, aura of despair. He's not actually frightened yet, though, right? No. No. That just prevents the fright from going down or something? Uh, for... What does that do? It, it, it's the other aura. Because I'm a minus one penalty to fear. Again, saving throws against fear. Yes. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and... Did we figure out if this guy can be frightened or not? We have no one. one's tried. No one's met, succeeded at... No one's frightened. succeeded at a knowledge check or succeeded at frightening him. I will go ahead and say fuck it and hit him with another intimidating strike for my first two actions. Then. Sweet. See if I can frighten him. Ooh. 30 to hit. That hits. 25 damage. Ooh. You, ah, oh, that's right. You put the ghost touch rune on oh, your weapon. Oh, I have a weapon. ghost touch sword. Yes. <laughs> yes. Gonna come in handy here because it totally takes forgot that. all of that yeah. 25 damage. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, when you succeed on an intimidating strike, what happens? He's now frightened one, if he can be frightened. Can be? It's just automatic. He's frightened one. And is. The Geist is now frightened one. There we go. And the Aura of Despair is the aura that makes it so it doesn't go below one. Oh, well, there we go. Wow, well, shit. Go. You know, I got one action left. What should I do, guys? Just another swing? You got any spells that are worth? No. No, I don't. I say one action spells, probably not. No, no. What am I do? Light them up. Okay, I'm gonna take another swing. Third action. Oh, and I roll nice. up. Oh, twenty nine hit. Twenty nine hits. Oh, very poor damage though. Thirteen damage. That's all right. It'll take all of that damage. Good old plus one striking ghost touch sword. Massive turn wow. from Arius. Good rolls there. Makes a difference. Uh, Lucan, before it's your turn, because it is here in just a moment, a head pops out at the end of the hallway a good hundred feet down, and uh, an older husk zombie professor shouts down, Everything okay down there? I heard a sound. Oh, yes, you know, just straightening things up and uh, quite the mess, you know. Is that Nathnelma's office? Yes, well, she does like to summon unusual undead now, doesn't she? And they rather stumble about. I suppose you're right. He shuffles away. Lucan, it's your turn. Um, I quick duck inside and close the door behind me. Can I? How many actions would that take? Two. Two? All right. Uh, then I'll throw... And act together onto one of them and have Sun Drinker. Or actually, you know what? I'll spend my third action doing act together and I will um, do, uh, do uh, things I can do. Oh, yeah? Boost Eidolon. Boost ah. Eidolon. A cantrip. One action. And uh, fuck it. I'll use a free action to extend boost. Boom. And I have to make a check. Nature for you? Well, it could be any one of them. Well, no, I guess it does have to be nature for me. Yeah, it's my casting check. So this is pretty bad. I don't have a great plus to it. And I roll a three, so I fail. So uh, I only get the one extend boost, but it doesn't use up my focus point. Or, uh, I don't get extend boost. I get one round of boost Eidolon. Does not use up my focus point. And then with the Eidolon, I attack. Swing, bludgeoning, get a 32. A 32 hits. We'll see if I deal any damage to this, uh, oh, two nat ones on that damage. That's 12 total damage. Oh, shit, you guys should be getting plus two damage to each of your hits. That's 14 total damage. Plus four from Arya's. Add four more damage for me, then. All right. Of your 12... Or sorry, of your 14. 14, only four of it goes through. Yeah, of course. Is it magical? It is magical, yes. Okay, okay. Then after Lucan, that takes us over to Shara. It's your turn. Um, so what is this thing doing? Like floating or flying? Or? It's 
floating. It's a typical, you know, incorporeal situation. It, you know, has a ghost, fly speed, thing. but it, yeah, it's ghosty things, yeah. Um, we'll start out by attacking it because it's already frightened. I can try to shove it or anything like that. So we'll just take a swing at it to start out with. And only get a 26 to hit. A 26 does miss. Okay. We will raise shield. Oh, I don't know what to do with the third action. I don't feel like a second swing will do a whole lot, but... Religion check. I don't know what we even want here to know anymore. I already tried, so I assume I don't oh. really get a chance to do that again. It gets harder. So I could try again? Yeah, if you want to try again, you can. I mean, it's about the same as trying to attack this thing again. At this point, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for a good roll on one of them. <laughs> nope. 19. That won't do it. That's my turn. Then, after Shira, that's going to take us up to the top of round three. Before I go further here, we've got another hour that's passed. I'm going to give the hour, or give the hero point to Lucan for taking the hints and using actions to prevent an issue. Yay! That takes us to the Geist, and the Geist uses its first two actions to use something called Wrath of the Haunt. And what happens is, is in the room, there are... I haven't really had a chance to describe the room. Let's be honest, you went straight into fighting toothy robed guy. You know, there's shelves, bookshelves, there are bones of unknown varieties, there is a pendant to what looks like a, a dented and tarnished symbol of Serenre on one of the shelves. Many other, what like, now? almost almost trophies. Oh. From the pendant, or from the religious symbol of Serenre, a, you can see this visible manifestation getting pulled from that object. And it almost looks like this wispy, smoky essence that's being pulled from it. And the geist absorbs it. And then it lashes this out. Provoke, right? No, it does not. It does not. Basically what's happening is the geist is eating a haunt. And because it's eating a haunt, it's going to lash out at creatures around it. Now, this only actually works on living creatures. Both Kix and Shara need to give me a reflex save. So there's an act. There's an active haunt here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Kix, I lied. You don't need to give me a reflex save. You need to be within ten feet, and you're not. Good, because I rolled poo poo. You did roll poo poo. Uh, yeah, Shara, then that would be you that needs to give me the save then. Well, um, fuck it, we'll take it. I get a 19 total. And that fails. Failure. So you're going to take 14 points of slashing damage. Okay, I am going to activate myself as shield. I mean, just an enemy within 15 feet damages you, so. This would count for that, yep. Um, two plus half your level. So half our level... It's what, three, I guess, at this level? Is that five? Oh, not minus 15, I wish. Minus five. What the hell? I said minus five. Why did You're it resistant three to slashing. Oh, hey, I'm resistant three to slashing. How about that? Look at that. So your selfish shield takes some off, and then your uh, slash resistance takes some off. So I end up taking six. And then some negative damage, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, negative damage. Yay. With its third action, it's going to attack Arius. And gets a 33 to hit. <laughs> That's almost 20. Yeah. Yeah. Arius take ugh, minimum damage, 12. 12 damage. Okay. Uh, and that Wrath of the Haunt thing wasn't considered a spell. It was just an ability. Oh, uh, yeah, it's just an ability. Now, it has the divine and necromancy traits, but it's not a spell. <laughs> that takes us over to Kix. It's your turn. <clears throat> well, we'll just start it off by another dazed message, except this time on 
Arius. Wait, did I miss doing a reflex save on that thing? You're not living. Oh, yeah. It's Specifically living. living creatures. And neither it sucks is Sun True. The Geist didn't know before about Sun Drinker, but does now. Well, it's not going to do it very good. Get much good because it's going to be dead. So, what's that message doing for me? You get to shove, strike, or trip, or stride, or step if you choose to do that. Full free! Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and shove it. All no, right. I'm, I'm right <laughs> Oof. Roll six. I'm our hero point, though. I got two. Why not? There it is. There we go. 31 to hit. 31 hits. Uh, mediocre damage. 16 damage. It all goes through. Uh, 18 damage. Sorry, I forgot to add the plus two. That's my 18 damage. <laughs> I'm, t- I'm taking it. Well done, Kix. Well done. I mean, two of it's mine, but right. yet it's yours. I don't know how that works. Uh, um, shoot, we'll just... I'm going to forbade forbidden thought, but I'm not going to amp it, so on his turn he'll do this. We'll do uh, just a strike. Okay. Then that takes us over to Arius. It's your turn. I swing a bunch. Nobody's really hurt, swing right? Swing lots. Yeah, everyone's fine. I swing a bunch. You're the only one who can heal, hit it, or, you know, deal it damage without all the reduction. Yeah, you can easily deal it the most damage. So. It's pretty good damage. Not with a natural one. I'm going to use that other hero point I got. <laughs> 27 to hit? 27 hits. Uh, 17 damage. All right. Hero point well used. It's too Second well used. Second swing. That's uh, got. That's got to be a miss. Third swing. Crit fishing hard. Give me a twenty. Oh, I thought that's, that a, was that's a two. Rough. I'm guessing that eight won't do it. Eight will not. Mm, it was close. Okay, will that's my turn. Not the geist is getting ripped to pieces. Shreds like that robe that it has is just getting shredded, and each of the shreds that Arius opens up with his ghost touch sword, teeth are where the shred is, and the shred turns into a mouth. Then, after Arius, that takes us over to Lucan. It's your turn. All right. Well, since we were gonna want to do some magic damage to this guy, let's do that. I will electric arc. So, a reflex save, please. Reflex save. It gets pretty good. 32. That is a success, though not a critical success. We'll take half of 13, which is 6, so none. It takes none of that damage. None none damage. That's, That's cool. I boost Eidolon with one action as an act together. And uh, then attack with Sundrinker with Sundrinker's one action from that boost idle on. Uh, excuse me, one action from that act together. I don't know exactly what I said there. I'll find out in a few months when I edit it <laughs> what stupid words came out of my mouth. <laughs> words. Ugh. I miss. That was a pointless turn. Oh, not entirely pointless if you spend one of your two hero points. It's completely silly for me to spend a hero point attacking this thing. I can't deal it any damage. Yeah, that's fair. Then, after Lucan, that takes us over to Shara. It's your turn. Okay. Well, we'll start off by raising the shield, just to get that out there. Then we will take one strike at it. Get 28 to hit. 28 hits. And we'll see if we can actually deal it any damage. 15, because that does already have the plus 2 in it. It does. Nice. It takes 5 of that 15. Yeah, yeah, we get it. You take reduced damage. (laughs) Well, we'll just try a second time. Hope for a 19 on the die. Hey, how about that? 31. That'll do it. 31 hits. And double sixes. What's the opposite of snake eyes? Boxcars? Is that what they call sixes? Boxcars? I don't know. I don't don't play gambly dice games. Uh, So 20 damage. Gambly dice games. Knocks that down to 10, but still, solid damage from Shara. For once. (laughs) Then uh, that takes us up to the top of round four. The Geist is going to do a thing that it doesn't know that it probably shouldn't do. It's going to stride, fly away to the south. 
Ha-ha! And yes, double sixes is, is called boxcars. It is. Nice. nice. You trying to run from me? At least I already said it. Yeah. 25 to hit. 25 hits on the nose because flat-footed and frightened. I didn't add the plus two. Uh, 19 damage. <laughs> At some point, you'd think I'd remember to just add the plus two, but I won't. I won't. We just need to have you guys, like, add the effect. It just sounds like so much work. I gotta, like, click things. <laughs> Instead, you have to go, oh, yeah, I forgot. Do an extra two damage. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, I mean, that's just saying a few words and making Tyler do work. I'm cool with that. Future David, too. <laughs> no one cares about future David. Fuck that yeah, guy. That's, that's future David's all about problem. present David. About future <laughs> David's problem. <laughs> This is the real reason he's like editing shit. Uh, <laughs> he's just like, I fucked this. this. this, 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 this like, I gotta correct so much of your guys' shit. <laughs> <laughs> so much editing. All right. Why are you guys so bad at this? You guys are fucking idiots. So the guys, <laughs> oh, jeez. So the guys uh, gets just ripped as uh, Arius, or by Arius, as it moves away from Arius. Like, that was the whole point move away from the scary skeleton that's mauling it. I swear to god, you metagame my forbidden thought every fucking time. <laughs> I know you don't. I mean, it, it just seems like it It never goes off. In my it defense, never goes up. It has three hit points. It really <laughs> oh, wants okay. to get the fuck away from Arius. <laughs> which, it does. I'm pretty sure it's just gonna fuck off entirely. Can I s come up with a reason why it won't? Yeah, it strikes at the table next to it for some reason. Yeah, it bites the table out of frustration. <laughs> just, oh, we don't no. really need to kill it. I mean, we're not gonna, it's not like we're going to get loot for killing it. I mean, yeah. Piss off, ghost. This is true. <laughs> Piss off. Congratulations. I don't give a shit about killing you anyways. The ghost pissed off. Wait, uh, isn't there like a no mercy thing? I, I can't. Like, I'm not giving up mercy. It ran like a little bitch. Okay. Yeah, there's no mercy here. <laughs> yeah, chasing it down, it probably has a ridiculous fly speed. It's not insignificant. Also, you know, barriers are not really a thing when you're incorporeal. And not a PC. Obviously. Because fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Just fuck the PC. <laughs> fuck the PC. Uh, I'll let Sundricker try and clean up the poor corpse of this dead person while we search through notes trying to find anything incriminating about... At, at this uh, point, he's uh, destroyed. Very destroyed. Yes. But I don't want there to be, like, evidence of him being killed in here. That's legit. But yes, searching through notes, looking for anything that seems like it might be related to the plot we're trying to uncover... Or just anything that tells us about what Nethnelma might be up to in any way. So, you kind of have, as far as you know, free reign to uh, to investigate here. So, you know, take some exploration time to do that. You find that there are letters atop the desk. Um, and each of the letters has Nethnelma's home address written on it. So you know exactly now where she lives. That's good. I take note of that. It's a townhouse in the Three Gates, which is the district that you're in. And there is a letter in the waste basket from the Palladium. This letter is in the waste basket. It has uh, a seal with the symbol for Urgothoa on it. And decorating the shelves, there is... Oh, gosh. There's tons of stuff in here. What is this thing with the Urgotho symbol? It's a letter. I'm confused. It's a letter. The letter has a seal on it. Oh, from the Palladium. Yep, yep, yep. Well, we read that. Otherwise, there's that religious symbol of Serenre that was haunted before it got deactivated by the Geist. Don't you have to shy away from that or something, Lucan? Oh, that's right. Yes. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. These symbols to non-evil deities do trigger my, like, vampire weakness. What happens to you? Yes, it's my revulsion. 
I have to make a will save, which has the concentration check. On a success, I overcome my revulsion for 1d6 rounds or one hour on a critical success. I, otherwise, I'll gain the fleeing condition. No shit. Well, I'm going to take one of them hero points because that's the nat one. What is this because of? The holy symbol of Serenre. Hey, look at this. Hey, 32. That is not a critical success. Okay, so I am not fleeing for three rounds. As soon as I see the holy symbol of Serenre or come within 10 feet of it, I guess we'll just pretend I didn't come within 10 feet of it while in combat. You didn't. I come within 10 feet of it, and immediately I feel sick to my stomach, and I shoot my eyes over to where this feeling is like emanating out towards me, and I go, oh, oh, uh, excuse me, I must leave. And I step back to the door. Could somebody please throw that thing all out the window? Oh, it's making me ill. What's it made out of? Gold. Gold's pretty malleable. Try to crush it. <laughs> or at least disfigure it enough, like, that it doesn't look like the symbol anymore or something. Damn, give me an athletics check. I uh, want a net 20 for a 35. <laughs> sure, it crushes it into it crumbles just a in your ball hands. <laughs> of gold. It's, it's now just, like, a lump. Did that work? I step a little closer. Uh, that worked. Wow. Impressive. But you said there's others of these, right? Uh, not holy symbols. Okay, all right, okay. There is a skull that looks like it, you know, it's, it's a skull that has uh, gemstones embedded into it. Oh, it says brandished. It has to be brandished. That's okay, I liked that scene. That was fun, yeah. It works. There is a figurine of a triceratops carved from a dinosaur's bone. Cool. And any castings of Detect Magic return a yes. Sweet. Wait, are you at a high enough level to determine the strength of magic or I believe I am now. Because now it should... That's a level four spell? Yeah, it goes up to seven... And detect magic, heightened to level four, as third level, but you also pinpoint the source of the highest level magic, the highest. Like, for an impre- like for an imprecise sense. I don't learn the exact location, but can narrow down the source to within a five-foot cube, or the nearest, if larger than that. Huh. On one of the shelves behind Nathnelma's desk is a jade serpentine figurine that is emanating magic. A strong conjuration aura. Well, we should go check that out. Yeah, definitely check that out. I feel like just like anything magical, we just like toss it in our bag of holding and <laughs> keep going. I was going to say, are you, guys sta- are, you, are you guys sitting in the office doing this? How much time do you intend to take here? I mean, not trying to... I don't think we're, like, identifying this stuff in the office. Oh, no, we're not going to identify these things in the office. Got it. But we'll pick them up. No, I'm frantically searching for, like, all the notes that I would want. Gotcha, gotcha. Probably the papers that were on her desk. Yeah, like I said, like, th- like that letter that was in the trash, if there was... Was there an actual letter in it, or was that just, a like, an envelope? Uh, it was the letter. It was one of those letters that was written on really nice parchment that was the envelope as well. Okay. And the seal so kind yeah, of would... kept it together. Was there anything on that letter that was important or just the fact that it was... Oh, yeah, there's important there. stuff there. But I want to let, let, let this, the looting happen first. Aside from the uh, magical... So we've, got the skull, we've got the magical skull, right? With the... The skull's not magic. There's the, there's a skull with gems in its mouth. And then a triceratops carved from what looks to be bone, like a dinosaur bone. And then that holy symbol that you kind of destroyed already. I mean, it's still gold. It's still worth the value of gold. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, just like tossing it all in the bag of holding and moving on. So... As you get to, which one do you want to do? Grab first. Grab the triceratops, the skull. Um, it's the skull. Skull cooler. The skull's over here, up in the north side. As you approach the skull, 
Give me a perception yeah. check. I'm curious what's going I'm on. I'm good at failing that. Hey, look at that. I did 14. <laughs> Shara doesn't hear. Or Kix, are you accompanying Shara to... I'm following Shara just for shits and giggles. Throw the things in bags. Got it. Shara does not hear the anguished whispers of the demi-lich's victims that are haunting the gems that reside in its mouth. And as Shira goes to reach forward, one of the gemstones activates. Shira, or Swanee, roll a d4. I mean, what could be better than a four? What could be better? Do you have any active spell effects on you right now? I mean, I've got my aura. I don't know if that's considered a spell effect or not. Okay. Go ahead and give me a will save. Is this a mental effect at all? Uh, no. It's not, actually. Probably can't say that I have my uh, shield raised, so I can't use that. Uh, I get a 20. I fail. I don't know. Do I I hero point this? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what it does. You can feel the gem, and it's a purple gem. It raises up inside of the mouth a little bit, and then it glows, and then it bursts with magical energy. And it envelops you, and you can feel it tugging at the magic runes that are attached to your armor and even to your weapons. And you can feel it trying to drain magic. But because you don't have any spells on you that have a duration... Nothing actually happens. It was the spell... Spell rack. Oh, so it's trying to... Dissent, spell, or... Yeah, spell rack deals a bunch of damage f- uh, as it drains the durations of spells that are affecting you. So it's kind of like oh. it pulls down buffs. And deals damage. That's and deals cool. damage. Persistent force damage. Really cool. Really cool. But yeah. No, this is a, a skull with gems inside of it. And the gems seem to be haunted in some way. Do you still try to bang the skull? Bang the skull! Can I do like a religion check to figure out the hauntiness of it? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, I know I've had like two good rolls tonight, and there were really good times to have those good rolls, <laughs> but these like sixes and threes are killing me. Yeah, Sharon's got no fucking idea what's going on here. Kix, do you want to give me an occult check? Because you're standing right behind Shara. Dude, I'm a cult the shit. <laughs> With a two. Fucking hero boy, baby. Arius looks over his shoulder and identifies it. 25. <laughs> Arius is so scared. Yeah. Arius really likes fucking up haunts and ghosts. chair has got it, like, in her hand when Arius sees it. <laughs> Yeah, Arius, you can you can see that Shara in in her hand is holding a skull that is currently being haunted by the victims of the skull. The skull with the gems in it, you think is might be a demi lich. Solid. Or maybe the remains of a demi lich. But there were four skull or four gems in there, and three of them are still active. I let them know. Interesting. And Arius notices this? Yep. That first one didn't do anything to me, so I'm sure it's fine. Just on a glance. I mean, in game, Zeriel provides Arius the knowledge. <laughs> Who's got the bag of holding? I go throw this in the bag of holding. Yeah. Who does have the bag of holding? I believe I do, but I give it to Sundrinker most of the time. As Shara passes by Kicks who is standing behind her. One of the other gems activates. Kix, roll a d3. No! Do it! We're just, gonna, we're just gonna pop all these gems right away. Two. That's not a d3, but we'll take a two. Reflex save. 19. 19 is a failure. A bolt of lightning shoots out from the gem, hits Kix in the chest, Deals kicks 60 points of electric damage (laughs) and then chains to Shara. Shara, give me a reflex save. 23. 23 fails. Shara, take 54 points of electric damage. It then cascades to Arius. Arius, give me a reflex save. Good fucking god. (laughs) 
Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Arius, take 102 electricity damage. Arius goes down. Yeah, Arius is dying too. Holy fucking shit. And Lucan is. Oh, nope. It cascades to Sundrinker. Yeah. Actually, this is going to affect both of you, Lucan and Sundrinker, so don't you both roll. Well. That's like on. That's on AoEs. That's like on a thing that would affect just, both of us, like, at the exact same time. This is that's like. That's a good point. That's a good point. I get a 29. Sundrinker gets 29. Is it consi- Are you considered two different targets? Yes, we are two different targets. Yikes. So yeah, it's probably still going to affect me twice if it can bounce that far. But, but at least I succeed the first one. Yeah, it doesn't critically succeed. So it still passes on to Lucan. Um, I was supposed to roll just the damage once. Who wants me to use the 60 instead of just rolling new? <laughs> nah, you can use the second to last one, which is 51. <laughs> uh, That's just... your fault. You gotta use the lowest one now. Nah, we're just gonna go new rolls every time. Uh, Sun Drinker, take 57 points of electricity damage. I'll take half of that. Half. half, that's right. On the success. Thank you. And then uh, reflex save from Lucan as it cascades to Lucan. 25? Is a failure. Oh, is a, a failure? Failure? Your reflex is nine is the better question. <laughs> Lucan takes 63 points of electricity damage. All right. Drop that fucking skull. <laughs> and, and then and then the, the electricity, it, it after cascading into the entire party, the smoke is rising from most of you, uh, but it, it fades. Kicks and Sundrinker give me perception checks. 16. Kicks don't hear shit. Sun drinker, don't hear shit. All right. No, are no, that you were too distracted. I mean, obviously, Arius is down. We have to go into initiative right now. The try to raise Arius initiative. Does anyone have an easy way to heal Arius? Yes. Kicks does. We, I think we all do. Kicks does. Oh, yeah. I've we really that. have to see because Arius, you die, die, or are destroyed at dying four, right? Mm, no. It's dying five. Let me double check. I have die hard. It's dying five. It's dying five. Okay, don't bother rolling initiative then. As long as Kix actually yeah. gets a heal off within seconds of it happening to Arius during round one, it would work. Because I mean, it's thirty feet, so yeah, I can just cast. Yeah, or I can battle medicine or anything. Yeah. I have shit on me too, like oil of unlife on me. Wand of harm on me. The only reason I ask about Die Hard is that uh, you can all heal him within the first round, but if he rolled a higher initiative and he died at a dying four, the recovery check would matter. I would say his initiative would go to like above the Demolich Skull and he would be and for that exact purposes of why that rule is in I place. I suppose you're right. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Like, if we wanted to get into that, that's exactly so how that would play everybody out. Everybody goes that's before I'd make a check. That's yeah, a because that's the whole reason that rule exists. But anyways, you're healed 28. Nice. So what do you do with the skull? Activate two again. No! <laughs> yeah. Only two Throw more. It back to where it came from. <laughs> what did the first one do? It tried to dispel a spell on me, which would have dealt me damage. I'm gonna heal myself. But yeah, chain lightning. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, the chain lightning. Yeah, and... I'm gonna heal myself. Yeah. I'm just gonna throw that out there. There's some. There's. There's the. The last two aren't great either. So you throw the uh, skull into the corner of the room where it came from. It shatters, and the gems clatter to the shelf. Uh, but you can still see the two faintly glowing over there, rattling a little bit. Then they subside, because nobody is near them. Does Kix have anti-haunt stuff, or no? No, that's that character I never made. Okay. So, that was terrible. So, yeah. Who wants to throw some heals around? <laughs> yeah, I start battle better, or I start menacing myself. While uh, while still searching through these docks as best I can, 
<laughs> are you battle medicing or are you no, trying not to spend regular 10 medicine. minutes? I don't think we're going to I don't think we want to spend 10 minutes here. Oh my gosh. Have we found anything of relevance? How much time have we spent and have we found anything? You've already found something of relevance. I've mentioned it a couple of times and yes, uh, the amount of time that you're spending is just, you know, searching. Sure. Not making it go too far, like 10, 20, 30 minutes. It's just under five. This is all happening. Oh, well, I, I feel like we have we could spend more time than that. It's up to you. I mean, we've already had a faculty member notice something weird going on over here. So plus that ghost could be doing who the fuck knows what. Look and you find a magical dagger and two magical bags of dust. OK, I'll take them. But I'm much more interested in paperwork. Yeah. The important thing was in the trash. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, I I guess I assumed that you were going to be reading all of the paperwork. I'm skimming, light skimming. Light skimming. I'm looking for words that jump out to me. I'm working for grave claw. I'm working for brain grit. I'm working for uh, whatever it is. Uh, Your eyes see something that say large quantities. Large quantities, yeah, shipments from uh, wherever it was we were, Sallow Shore. I look for Sallow Shore. Um, I'm looking for caviar. I'm looking for uh, any of these words that relate to what we've done, any of the names that I'm familiar with. What you find on the desk, you don't actually see anything that matches what you're looking for on the skim. Uh, what you do find is that the letter in the in the garbage, the one that Shara had, the one with the Ergothoan seal on it, yeah, s- talks about large quantities of something called shadow ash. Interesting. Okay. We'll come back to it. I'm not thinking about any of it right now. I'm not ready to sit and think. I'm just madcap searching. Okay. Yeah, that's basically it. Okay. I don't really bother trying to put things back. I mean, we're stealing a bunch of shit anyway. Yeah. And uh, as soon as I feel as though I'm not going to get anything better out of here, I guess it's time to go. Shall we go out the door or out the windows? Out the door or the windows? Is there anything... Have we seen people going past the windows or anything? Or? Uh, not, not really. Only because her windows seem to be kept intentionally obscured with a layer of dust. Like, her office isn't dusty, but there seems to be just dust on the, the windows to keep people from looking in. Strange how she got it to just sit there like that. Interesting. All right. So you make off with your paperwork. You have... Abscond. We abscond. You've absconded with your paperwork, your uh, figurine of a jade serpent, a magical dagger, and then two bags of some magical dust. And is there a triceratops something? There was a triceratops. Do you move to grab the triceratops? Spoilers. Don't. <sighs> what is this? Curse of the ex- feel like extinction curse? What the fuck? Haunt. <laughs> the only reason it didn't trigger so far is because Lucan is not living. Otherwise, Lucan would have triggered uh. it like five times down there by himself. It's down here. Gotcha. Sounds like gotcha. we're leaving. <laughs> yeah, no, I was very specifically looking for like papers and stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The dust I'm interested in because I want to, you know, I. Dust is, is that is in line with things we're looking for. So, you abscond. Do you head back to the inn? No, not directly. Where do you go? I want to make sure I'm not being followed. Uh, I, I, of course, first have to meld into Sundrinker as I go. And then I'm probably just going to go find a park and sit and be a tree for a while. I'm going to say that the sun actually has set. Okay. If that makes a difference. To sure. You yeah, it definitely does. But yeah, I'd, I would say to the whole group, let's not return directly. Let's try and make sure we're not being followed. Let's get out of here. Go heal up. Maybe let's go to just a tavern or something or just a park. Heal up and then make our way back to where we want to be and be cautious to make sure nobody's watching us. And if they are, we'll kill them. Does anyone have survival? Yes. I sure do. Cover tracks might be appropriate here. Yeah, let's do that. It's those things. I don't know what they are. 
Exploration activities. Those things. Exploration activities. I get a 29. 29. To cover my tracks. Lucan covers the tracks of the the whole party. And the way that we're, I'm kind of doing that in my head here, just for a thematic purpose, is Lucan is making sure to check every angle, you know, looking up in rafters when they come up or, you know, around corners that are incidental or maybe seem incidental, as well as picking up little pieces of things that get dropped, whether it's rose petals by Sun Drinker or... You know, bits of bone that come off of Arius for whatever reason. I'm sure it happens. <laughs> but you make sure that you are, in fact, not being followed. And you believe that you successfully covered your tracks. Make your way out of the Twilight Castrum. And then I'll head back to our inn, where I will rest and heal, because I'm extremely damaged. Yeah, I can just heal people. Or harm people. Heal people, harm people. I'll never I'll never decide what one's right. Yeah, will it make a difference or will we be able to heal up and Well, it depends on what you all want to do. Like nothing's gonna stop you from just healing up or resting. What time of day is it? Is it that nine thirty nine? I am going to I would assume there's a place in this town, in this city, where I can buy like a bottle of blood. Yeah, absolutely. Without a doubt. Okay. I do that. I go pick up maybe a couple bottles somewhere, bring them back to the room, and I want to sit want to sit and drink, and I want to contemplate what I'm reading. I want to make checks on these magic items. Sweet. I'll treat some of your wounds while you're fucking around. Fucking around. I just now I'm like imagining Arius giving me like a shoulder rub while I'm like <laughs> reading. <laughs> Drinking. Shara's like, yes, Lucan. Drink more. Drink more. <laughs> Indulge yourself. Why do you have to make it so weird? It doesn't have to be weird. Why do you think it's weird? Uh, never mind. I'm an Agathon worshiper too. I just want you to know. Just, I just, just want you to know. I wouldn't dare. All right, heal 12. Thanks. I'll take it. It feels better. Do it for an hour so you get 24. Sweet. Wait, other people need healing too, don't they? True. Every 10 minutes, I cast yeah, you got yourself, Touch of Corruption yeah. on myself. I can save these yeah, guys you, some you time here. I don't care about the quick. You're not in any danger whatsoever. You're going to be able to heal. No problem. So you can go ahead and just Excellent. bring yourself up. As far as nice. the items that you've brought out. The dagger is a plus one striking dagger. I'm going to give you that one because kind of get to that point in the campaign where you've seen more than a handful of these. Um, The object, the jade serpent, that one I will need a magical check. Arcana, nature, occultism, religion, your choice. 29, Arcana. That is a wondrous figurine of the Jade Serpent variety. Like most wondrous figurines, it activates a creature. This one activates a giant viper. How giant? Uh, it's a medium creature. <sighs> Too giant for the uses I had in mind. Oh. Jade Serpent. Got it. All right. It'd be better for a Jade Anaconda. <laughs> yeah, it is more of an anaconda. Excellent. Do you have buns, hun? I, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. We'll see if it wants some. God, geez. Full of them tonight. Uh, crafting check for the uh, bags of magical dust. Yeah, that one I cannot do. Yeah, it's just kicks now. Yeah. 30 crafting. 30 is a success. These are two bags of dust of disappearance. Okay. Now, how about this piece of trash paper? All right. So, the trash paper. This is the story-relevant information. On the envelope is it looks like it is penned as a response. The palladium... You can tell after reading a few lines, must be some sort of temple to Ergothoa. It's a shrine 
to Urgothoa. And it's actually located in the Three Gates District, where the Twilight Castrum is. A mid-ranking priest is responding to Nethnelma's request for large quantities of shadow ash by stating, Unfortunately, Nethnelma, we are unable to produce such large quantities of shadow ash as you request. We must decline your offer at this time. Ask Kix to make a crafting check to know what that is, that ash is. Would that be a crafting check, or would that be some it other would be. check? Shadow Ash kicks a 20. You're not sure. You've never heard of it before. I doubt it. I'm pretty well-versed in shadowy <laughs> things. But... Sorry, I'm only well-versed in Shadow Ash, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Spencer, did you use any hero points tonight? I sure did, Buster. Yeah. Okay. I used it on the perception check to the skull thing. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's all right. We'll find out. We'll, we'll, you we'll, will. We'll figure it out. You will. There's a buddy that owes me a favor. I mean, I probably need to go to the Palladium anyways. We'll just go ask him what, what it is. We don't need to tell him why. Got yourself a potential lead? What do you think the Shadow Ash is used for? You're not ready to draw any sorts of conclusions yet. Oh, I mean, I've been saying it the whole time. I feel like this is another one of ingredient. the missing ingredients. It's just another ingredient. Like, like it's been made clear that the other two are, like, fairly innocuous. And I've just been thinking that, like, there's got to be something else that mixes with it that makes it not innocuous. All right. All right. That's what I assume this does. And perhaps with more things as well. You give me a... Give me a knowledge religion. Not saying, damn, my one e brain just like turned on there for a hot second. Uh, give me a recall knowledge. Recall knowledge. It is religion, right? It is religion. Yes. What's wrong with my brain yeah, right now? There, I can't there, think of two There is terms. a religion skill in okay. 2E. Yes. <laughs> give me a religion check. But vote a nat twenty for nat 31. twenty, of course. Oh, nice. Uh, so. Cheryl would actually know about the Palladium. The Palladium is a, a very old temple to Urgothoa. It was once very prestigious, uh, but it has since lost some revenue and attendance over the past centuries, and now it's more of a, a shrine than it is a full-blown temple. It doesn't quite have the grandeur that... It, that uh, some of Eled's other larger temples to Urgothoa are, such as uh, the illustrious Pallid Pinnacle. But it is still an impressive old shrine and structure in its own right. Yeah, she would still totally be excited to go. You know, check out the old architecture, do what kind of things that they currently do, used to do maybe. Alright, alright. You know, all those things you do when you're sightseeing and stuff. <laughs> you gonna go pick up a disposable camera too? Yeah. Go get a camera, you know, put my fanny pack on. <laughs> Our gambit to break into Nethnelma's office seems to have gone pretty well without too much in the way of consequences. Amazing! Now we're off to a place called the Palladium. Will our success continue? Find out next time as we continue Blood Lords. And until then, may you have many great adventures of your own. It's your turn.